Folks, if you spend any time on a football field in the heart of this country, you've probably either heard a prayer or said one yourself. Praying actually isn't all that unusual in this country. Even Congress starts every session with a prayer. But if you're a football coach named Joseph Kennedy in Bremerton, Washington, you lost your job for praying. Yes, we know that a school can't force a student or a player to take part, but that isn't what Coach Kennedy used to do. He used to go to the 50-yard line after the game, get down on his knee, and offer his prayer to God, whether his team won or lost. He was on a knee, you know, like some NFL football players during the national anthem. But Coach Kennedy got down on his knee because he believes there is a greater power than all of us. And when players, parents, or fellow students asked if they could join him, he said, it's a free country. A country, by the way, he defended as a Marine for 20 years. So after a number of court cases that claimed he was coercing others to join him today, the Supreme Court heard arguments in the coach's case. The coach's lawyers say he was exercising his freedom of religion and his right to free speech. The school district that fired him said he went too far as a school employee. Here to discuss is distinguished university professor at Turo College, Thane Rosenbaum, and constitutional law attorney, Amir Benno. Thane, what, what's your take on what you heard today? Well, it's interesting. I actually heard some of the uh, oral argument. And for instance, Justice Kagan, it's like two different sets of facts. Normally, this doesn't happen in the Supreme Court. Normally, the facts are in, a, in, in accord, but they're arguing about law. In this case, Justice Kagan's view of the facts were, you weren't privately praying. You went out there publicly, openly inviting students, players, fans from the, uh, from the crowd, uh, opposing coaches and players, even state legislators, to join you. And when you did that, it looked, and since you're a government employee, this is a public school, not a private school, when you did that, it, it acted as if this school, the states, uh, endorsed your religion because you are the coach. Uh, of course, the, 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 attorney, the, the attorneys for the uh, coach are saying, that's not what happened at all. We just went out there, he went out privately. Right. It was very briefly a pr uh, prayer moment. He didn't require anyone go out there. If people followed him, that was their choice, but it lasted 10 seconds and it was over. So that's what made this unusual, Bob, that there yeah. was an argument over facts. Amir, I got to tell you, they do this all over the country. This just happens to be one of them. I brought my girls up mostly in Tennessee. And after the high school football games, we parents and, and, and the other students that didn't play and the players, uh, they were down there and the coach, there was silence. There was a moment of silence and um, he, nobody was forced to do it. And I think a lot of people are looking at this case, Samir, and saying, how is this any different than what we do on our football field? Right. It's not different, in fact. And what's so interesting about this case is there's really three aspects of the First Amendment that come up. There's the coach's free speech rights. Uh, there's his right to free exercise of religion. And on the school district side, they're saying there's the establishment clause. That's that's the protection against the separation of church and state, where they say the government can't endorse a particular religion. And they're saying that by him silently and briefly and uh, privately uh, taking a knee and saying a prayer of thanks to God, that that could be viewed by some reasonable observer, whoever that is, as some endorsement of religion. And so this is a case that it's unique in the sense, not only because there's the factual dispute that Thane correctly pointed out, but it wraps together three very important uh, protections in the First Amendment into one case. Yeah. Uh, Thane, uh, we understand schools can't endorse a religion, but people across this country are like, you know, I'm sorry, but faith is a big part of my life, and I want to be able to express that. And by God, with <laughs> no pun intended, when you're out there on a football field, you want, you, you, you're thankful for a lot of things. A lot of times that nobody got seriously injured, and and you, you just uh, um, want to take that moment and give that thanks. And nobody is forcing these people to do that. At what point can you just say this was all voluntary and, and you're allowed to do this? Well, social conservatives should take comfort that this Supreme Court has already shown a, a willingness to focus on religious liberty. That prince, very basic idea that a person has a r religious liberty right to express their religion. And now with the addition of Amy Coney Barrett, 
it looks like there's a, there'll be a five person majority that might take the position that you're taking, Bob. Here's here's something also that's interesting. Had the coach at the end of the game, even though he works for a public school, not a private Christian school, if he'd gone at the end of the game and took a knee for Black Lives Matter, no one would have asked anything. There would have been no question. <laughs> so true. There would have been no question about it. It would have been totally fine because, again, his position is it's not like this was during halftime and I was drawing up the right. plays. Right. And I said to the players, pray to God that Jimmy doesn't drop the ball. Pray to God. Now, that's <laughs> during the game. Right. He's saying, hey, the game is over. Mm -hmm. I'm just thanking God. That's a very simple gesture. And I could have been, and again, if he was making a political statement, I suspect they would have granted him that because it didn't interfere with yeah. his job. And, and that's it. People have had it up to here, Amir. We only have like 30 seconds. But I mean, it's like they do see exactly what Thane was saying. If it had been political, it probably would have been allowed. And all these people are trying to do is express their faith. Yeah, he, Thane's completely correct about that. Um, and one thing that's so important is, you know, what the Ninth Circuit said in this case is that once a teacher clocks in, from that point until they clock out and go home at the end of the day, anything that comes out of their mouth, even if they're saying grace before eating their lunch uh, in the school cafeteria, that's government speech and the government can control what they say. And what the petitioner here is saying is, no, that's not true. That we as teachers or we as coaches have a First Amendment right. And they can't just regulate what we say. And so that's what's before this court here. And the school yeah. district is trying to come up with some sort of uh, it, I'm not saying it's a phony establishment clause argument, but it is not. It's it's a false argument that that really does uh, diminish the actual free exercise rights of this coach. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting because I think there are a lot of people that have the prayers after the games, and they are not forcing other people to do it, and it means a lot to them. And um, like you were saying. Thane, perfect example. If it were political, that would be okay. There's got to be somewhere in there that people can do this and express their faith. That, that, that's obviously, I'm expressing my own personal thoughts, but uh, Amir and Thane, thank you so much. Thanks. Go. Thank you, Bob.